Okay, I'll call this meeting to order for September the 3rd, 2019. <clears throat> Resolved that the agenda for the September 3rd, 2019 regular meeting of council be approved. Moved by Councillor Moran or Wintoni, seconded by Councillor uh, White. All in favor? Opposed? Result that the minutes of the August 20th, 2019 regular council meeting be received and approved. Moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Friesen. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <clears throat> Moving on to our reception delegations. Uh, we have with us here tonight uh, Mark Maga uh, regarding the Fort Livingston uh, Saskatchewan Fire Protection. So, Mark, if you want to come forward? And, Let's get a list of. Uh, yeah, that's fine. And this information was also <coughs> held by email, I believe, to oh, yeah. members of council as well. Oh, was it? Yeah. But that's I made a list of all, right. uh, all the uh, people that this affects. Thank you. Maybe just leave one here. Sure. All right, so I'll let you uh, proceed then. Hey, good evening, my name is you Mark May. Set you, Mark, too, you for those of you who don't know me, I am the Division Four Counselor for the RN of Livingston. Um, <clears throat> I appreciate you giving me the time for to speak this evening. Um, upon receiving uh, your letter about the cancellation of our fire protection in that Division Four, um, I'm here to see if we can somehow. Uh, continue with that coverage. I brought a list of the names of the people that it affects. Uh, many of these residents call Swan River home. This is their hometown. Uh, if you look at, if you look through the names, uh, you'll see that uh, a lot of them should be familiar to you. Uh, many of the people work in town or have worked in town. Um, it's um, for even for myself. My family is all, you know, we've, this is our hometown. My wife's worked here f since we got married 30, pretty much 30 years ago. She's worked at the hospital. Um, at, for the last 20 years, we've been sending all our kids out of that area here to Swan River as well. Um, everybody in that area, well, pretty much, uh, I mean, we buy our groceries, hardware, uh, Necessities for living, crop inputs, farm equipment, um, recreational equipment. Uh, I mean, we support the community. This, this is our community. Um, being that uh, Swan River is our close, closest town, our next closest uh, place for our area would be coming out of Pelly then. To my yard alone, Swan River is 19 miles. At least 35. So it's uh, quite a difference, you know, in the distance to travel for, to have like a, any kind of fire service come up to us. So I guess here, I'm here on behalf of the ratepayers of my division, trying to see if there's something we can do to, to continue with the coverage in our area. That's okay, go ahead, Councilor. Just a question, Mark. One, thank you for coming and expressing your concern. I, I believe they're legitimate. I personally contacted your Reeve, maybe it slips me right now, at least once and talked to person more than a year ago, and again, less than a year, but like a year and a half, and a half no. a year. And I was never, there was never an expression given to me, and then I downloaded that up to Derek. Uh, of any, yeah, well, look, I, I had the feeling but nothing written, it was all personal. I'm new to council, I just came in in November. Okay. Um, like many other councils around Manitoba, Saskatchewan, we've had some issues. Um, my area has seen a great deal of neglect by previous council, thinking that, you know, we're kind of up in the corner there that nobody really needs to to look at us. So I'm 
council has changed uh, for my thinking to the better because now we're looking at stuff. Like I said, once this was brought to my attention as well, it's like, well, um, we need to do something about it. I, why it was kind of ignored before, I don't know. Um, and it, you know, it's, it's something, like I said, with the list of people that we have on here, you know, we, we have a substantial amount of people that, like I said, do call this home. And I, I, and I talked to Darren a little bit on the phone the other day. He, he had called me because after I got on the agenda, uh, he called me and he says, you know, he kind of said it was, uh, his concerns were a little bit of the communication and, you know, that they hadn't been out in our area for 10 years. And I'm thinking, well, that's a good thing. We're not like a high demand area. Like, <laughs> you know, he, you know, and I, I get the legitimate concerns of, you know, having, being out there and something happens here. Uh, but being that they haven't been out in 10 years and I'm not sure how often they go out of town here. I, I'm thinking the odds of that happening have got to be pretty tiny. You know, so like I said, I, I think we're a pretty low demand area. Uh, we don't have a lot of, uh, we apparently we haven't had really no demand homes for it, but it is nice to have that peace of mind that you have somebody that's available. So you do allude to zone four, is that just one part of the Livingston area? Yes. Is there lots more south, east, west of zone four? Uh, well, Pelly uh, looks after our west side of the municipality because yep. that is closer for them. And Pelly is supposed to be looking after south of White Beach. <clears throat> um, they used to have a, and like I said, I'm new to this, so I don't know of all the agreements. They used to have an agreement with Benito, but now that Swan Valley West took them over, I'm not even sure exactly what's kind of going on there. Um, you know, and that's, but right now, Pelly's supposed to be looking after the other three divisions because realistically, logistically, they're okay with it. But for us getting where we are already, it's just, the logistics are too far. So you're north? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Poole, did you have any communication with, with the Reeve? Is there a story not there anymore? Nothing written, just, just a verbal conversation. Same just, story? We can do without you? Uh, well, he said he would no, he no, he said he wanted to discuss it with his council. We just never heard back. But it was always, it was the same thing. I guess you call it peace of mind. You can call it insurance. But we still have to keep up with the capital costs, replace vehicles, mm. health labor costs, equipment costs, and uh, even though, you know, even though we've been on the call for 10 years, those costs are still on our repairs and we benefit from the just knowing that you have that coverage. Mm -hmm. So that basically the question would, would be, or my question to him is, what is that worth? And that's where the negotiation Oh, yeah. Forward. See, and like, <clears throat> sorry, <laughs> uh, our, we like I said, we've had issues in our, uh, our uh, Reeve, as well as not really been great at communicating these things like to me and, and to new council. And we also had an issue with our administrator. So we have a new administrator. So a lot of the, whether there was prior agreements or conversations uh, have went kind of by the wayside. And, you know, and that, that's why I'm here is trying to get this conversation back going before, you know, we're out of it uh, is, and then even when we got this last letter, the Reeve hasn't showed up for a couple of meetings already. So this is kind of where we sit. It's a little frustrating. And like we said, me being new to this is, is uh, so Mr. Smith. Yeah. Uh, Councilor McDonald. Thank you very much for presenting and coming to see us. We appreciate the, the conversations that we're having. And like yourself, I'm new to council as well. Um, and I sit on the protect, protection services committee as well, and we've had the a few conversations with Mr. Fedorchuk in in this regard. But I guess some of my concerns um, are are those of Mr. Poole and then the rest of council is um, about costs and infrastructure and communication. Um, I think the job of our council is to ensure that our protective services. Is, is taken care of and looked after and we run into issues. I'm understanding with 
um, communications as soon as we cross the border and into into that area uh, with the new fleet net radio systems and as well as costs um, we looked at our bylaws with protective services and we increased our cost to the actual costs of services not just um, picking out random numbers um, so I guess that's a conversation that we need to have and I think that I can't speak for all of council but knowing it, everything is good and dandy when you just know that there's um, you know that you have a fire department but when it actually happens to you it's it's a it's devastating and we know how important that is to ratepayers and and the community as a whole and I don't think that we are in the position of just terminating that conversation but it's a conversation that um, it, it bluntly I guess is is going to cost money and I think that if if that is an opportunity of conversation, we, we can definitely explore that. Um, so I guess that's something for you and to consider when you do go back to council or perhaps you have already thought about that. But those are my concerns, I guess, um, infrastructure, costs, those type of things. But um, I don't think that we'd have any objection to continuing the conversation to where that could lead. And yeah, I know they have... Uh, uh, an agreement with Pelly and I, you know, I, I can't, I don't even want to speculate what the numbers are, but they do, uh, you know, pay so much because that's it's basically the same. It's actually almost it's it's almost like a little private uh, fire department is what they have. It's still volunteer, but it's it's not with the town of Pelly. It's actually a kind of a private system that they have. So I know they do uh, uh, do some funding with them for for that area. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're definitely uh, we like to to explore what what it takes, and, and uh, I mean, everybody realizes that you know there's cost with with uh, with you know upgrading whether it's equipment or whatever, keeping people on. So we we do get that, and I mean, we're we're willing to sit down and have a conversation. Go ahead, Councilor. Um, well, thank you, like the rest of the Councilors, for coming out and expressing yourself, but. Uh, and further build on with uh, Chief Fedorchuk and the rest of the council are saying is like between the, our operational um, challenges with that and the coverage of if we're out there and be protecting our own infrastructure um, due to the great distance. Uh, one thing, another thing that we have to take into consideration is that a lot of our apparatus are more city orientated. Um, so they're not built to be going down long distance of big gravel roads. And as you know, ditch road is not the smoothest thing going that way so um, that that's pretty hard on a three-quarter of a million dollar apparatus going down there so um, we do have some equipment output or apparatus challenges going that way so but I guess Councilor Vittoni says uh, we're definitely open to looking at some of the conversation to see mm -hmm. if we can mitigate some of this or you know, where we can go and things like that but, uh, there's definitely a number of concerns that need to be addressed uh, for it, so, um, both operationally and fiscally. So. I just wanted to say that, you know, like they, they kind of touched down a little bit about that. We do have agreements with our other municipalities as far as fire protection and so on. And if that's something that maybe your municipality might be interested in, then that's something that we def definitely need to sit down and talk about mm -hmm. moving forward because you know, if, if, if the need of fire protection is there, and you talk about 35 kilometers and 19 kilometers, you know, in a case of a fire, that can be a, a big distance. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't seem big, but it can be. But I think more importantly, I think that if anything, we should be able to have a chance to sit down and talk with your counselor, you as counselor, and your, your reeve or the rest or whatever. I don't know yeah. what the mood of that is, but definitely this is the first step moving forward, and we have to talk about that, and, and maybe we can work something out that's the will so I think that maybe if, if our CEO Mr. Crow can contact your Reeve and maybe work something out where we can sit down and chat about it no different than what we do with the rest of our municipal partners yep is that fair sure okay <clears throat> all right any other questions comments okay thank you thank you thank you and I would include wait uh not just sending it to a reef, please, <laughs> uh, to myself or to a, the municipal office, actually. Even just the municipal office is plenty of enough, though. Okay. Sure. Okay. Thank you. 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 Th
Chair. All right, thank you for your time. Thank you, Councilor. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, man. Okay, moving on. Resolved that the RCMP first quarter invoice and reconciliation reports be received as information. Moved by Councilor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Morial. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? That's carried. So that was just information there that we see what's the billing and all that. There's some a lot of information. I did notice that there, Mr. Cole, that some of the the lettering and all that is, doesn't show up very clearly on the computer, so it's kind of hard to read. So I don't know if any of the other can read it better than I can, but um, just the way that it's scanned, it doesn't come up very clear. Oh yeah, actually, I, I played with this this afternoon and tried. To read it you get you gotta blow it up really big so if anybody's looking for more information on that but uh this is just for information right now okay resolved that the letter dated august 28 2019 from the association of natural municipalities be received as information moved by councillor Antoni, seconded by councillor Friesen. all in favor opposed it's carried Six point three. Am I supposed to have the resolution there? Six point three. Uh, no. <clears throat> okay, so it's, uh, yeah, it's so the reminder of tax sale auction September the eleventh, two p.m. Yes. And so this information here is is if any of council wants to attend the. Uh, meeting the financial finance officer or the CIO uh, is compelled to attend the meeting uh, just to witness that the uh, tax sale is happening. But council is welcome to attend as well. And that'll be held here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Moving on. Result of the superintendent of works report be received. Moved by Councillor White. Second by Councillor Wintoni. Questions to Mr. Poole, Councillor Morial. Oh, or did you would not raise your hand? Oh, scratch my oh, Okay, Councillor White. Just a query it was brought to me that uh, I'm sure you have the answer. Relative to the concerns which have been reported on with great length relative to the uh, airport, have not in the past our staff done that patch sealing, or has it always been an independent person coming from outside? Yeah, we performed crack sealing. Yeah. This was a, a full pavement patch, the full width of the runway. Okay, done deal. Thank you. So the answer to that is no. Yeah. We got it. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. The reports the Swan River Protected Services report for August. 2019. We don't need a resolution for that one. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. Yes, we do. I just noticed it. Okay. I'll just wait. I, I reviewed it earlier, but I didn't even notice it was a day Just a question though. What's the difference between a vehicle fire? And an MVI with fire. We'll just wait till we read the resolution, then you can ask the question. We don't know. <laughs> yeah.
Kevin talking over sitting here? <laughs> well, we don't have it. I'm talking about the resolution. It's crazy with the data on the resolution. I just, uh, that one question will get to that. But I noticed on the violations that uh, Chief Federczyk has nine of them and the uh, violation officer has two. Is, is, I didn't realize that the chief was doing a no parking, handicap parking issues also. He's writing tickets also. Okay. It's interesting that it's eight to two. And uh, Councilor Moore, do you know the difference in an MVI and a vehicle? It's a motor vehicle, I'd say. Uh, what's a, well, there's two here that talk about uh, vehicle and MVI. What's the difference? We'll just wait to the resolution. Okay, we're going to get through this one. It's ready. How come I don't see it? Oh, there we are. Resolved that the Swan River Protected Services report for August 2019 be received as information moved by Councillor. With Tony, second by Councilor Morio. Discussion, Councilor White. Uh, I need some uh, clarification. I don't know the difference between a vehicle fire and a motor vehicle incident with fire. Vehicle oh. fire is just a, st a standalone vehicle that caught on fire. Uh, an MVI with a fire is like a motor vehicle collision with a resulting fire. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. You have another question, Councilor White? Well, that's it. Are you sure? Yep. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. I guess the fire chief is doing some um, bylaw enforcement as well. Okay, moving on. Council and CO reports. Councilor Wintoni. Um, I don't have a lot to report on this period. I just want to say a shoot huge. Shout out to Councillor Friesen and the entire crew at the museum for their Harvest Festival. It was a, um, a great day and um, yeah, lots to do for the kids. Except there was a, a rainstorm there, but it was all in all, it was, uh, it was awesome to see so many people come out to that event. So kudos to you, Councillor Friesen. Mm -hmm. Um, just one question in regards to Mr. Poole, I guess, in regards to that subdivision in the surveying on that, uh, those properties that we did sell. I know that we were putting that to the committee of a whole, but just wondering if there was sort of where that was, was in terms of having that uh, homeowner's bill this year, or is that everything put on hold at the moment? I still have no summary as of Um, I, that's everything I have. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Morio. I got nothing to report okay. this period. Councillor Friesen. Um, thank you, Councillor Matoni, for the kudos. Um, the museum festival was a great day. Um, Friday night they had a harvest dance. It wasn't that well attended, but it's the first time they've done that in a long time, so they will persevere and try it again next year. And then Sunday was great with uh, the goulash building transformed into a old style fair, I guess you'd call it. It was kids games with suckers and ducks in water and bowling balls and it just was a lot of fun. The kids had a really good, good time. And then the supper was um, catered by the Aggies and it was over 200 people came for supper which was delicious. Um, September the 18th, I had a CTC strategic planning meeting with Barb Gemmel that's happening out at uh, Michelle and David Minish's. Um, September the 9th, I have a meeting uh, of CTC at the uh, building on the highway. 19th is a uh, meeting at Super 8 with the Business Consortium at 10 o'clock. Um, I think that's all I have. Thank you. Councilor White. Well, just a few small things uh, today by accident. I met with the 
three individuals who were part of the team that purchased the two uh, apartment blocks just north of the school. And they've expressed interest in looking at some of the properties that the town may have for sale or may not. So, uh, Mr. Cole or Mr. Poole and or I, and I believe the mayor is going to get involved to some degree. We'll uh, take them on a tour tomorrow and show them what we have to offer, what the community has to offer. So I stay positive of that. I also met recently with Ralph Betcher, who's the chair and president of Living Word Bible Institute. And he certainly had, probably has some degree of interest in the, uh, the school in Minnetonis, but somehow he felt he'd been left out of the loop. So he said he's certainly willing to talk to individuals, but the rules may have changed. So his communication with the school division uh, was one he'd like to have more communication and kind of more fairness. So uh, that's about it. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Councillor Lindoni. Can I just respond to Councillor White's comment? Just in regards to your tour, hopefully that you encourage the, uh, with your counter or with the folks that you have met um, in regards to the tour of the community, hopefully you can encourage some of the economic um, opportunities other than just some properties and things like that. Maybe there's some interest for those economic drivers for our community that are available. Give me a list of you, if you could, Councillor, when you get a moment, and certainly show us. Sure. Is that everything? Yes. Okay. Thank you. And uh, I don't have really much to report. I've been away for a little bit, so uh, and then I hear that the arena is going good and the ice is excellent, and uh, we're going to have a season there, so kudos to all the people that uh, worked on that to get that in place. Mr. Kroll, do you have anything to add tonight? Uh, not really, just business as usual. We have a strategic planning coming up on the 11th. Uh, hopefully everyone can can show. I know uh, Mr. Poole won't be available because he has to be in Brandon, Winnipeg. Winnipeg, sorry. Uh, but uh, other than that, we have everyone everyone here. It's good. And it was going to be hard to get everybody in the same room at the same time or in the room at the same time. But uh, it looks like that was a better date. So looking forward to that, Councillor Friesen. Just a question: It's at six fifteen. It is. Yeah. Okay, so we'll be move on. Eight point one resolved that the building permits sixty seven nineteen through seventy two nineteen with a total estimated value of forty six thousand one hundred thirty four dollars be received. Moved by Councillor Lantoni, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Result that the proposed sub subdivision for part of part of southwest one fourth, sorry, did you say one fourth or one quarter? Quarter. Quarter southwest section. one quarter section 2736, 27 west, and numbered by Manitoba Municipal Government, Community and Regional Planning Branches, file number 4455-19-7511, be hereby approved. A conditional use order will be required from council prior to a development permit being issued if the proposed subdivision is to be developed as a bare land condominium. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion. Where is this? Riverview Condos. This is up on the northeast. The old skyline, yeah. yeah. It's just a basement property directly east of the old sky. There's okay. some inviting on okay. the ocean. Okay. Further discussion? Questions? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. All the information there again was provided for you. <clears throat> Whereas section 326 of the Municipal Act provides that a municipality may impose supplementary taxes and subsections 306 and 306.1 provide that a municipality may cancel or reduce taxes upon receipt of assessment and altercations from Manitoba Assessment Services. Therefore, be it resolved that the assessment altercations alterations made by Manitoba Assessment Services on July the 24th and August 30th, 2019 be made to the 2019 property and business tax rolls with the result 
resulting increases totaling $15,719.54 and, and the reductions totaling $39,395.07. Moved by Councillor Morial, seen by Councillor Wintoni. Discussion? You have a question, Councillor Friesen? I just want to know what all that means. So basically, that just means the changes that were made to the assessment and their taxes are uh, affected accordingly, of going up or going down, correct? Yeah, so <clears throat> certain, uh, certain rate payers uh, applied and had their taxes reduced, and then other ones had theirs reassessed and they actually went up. So in the difference, uh, ours, this, this year is gone. It will be going down overall by about 24000 I think. Further mm -hmm. questions or discussion? Thank All you. in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Resolved that the following contributions budgeted in the 2019 financial plan be made from the general operating fund to the following funds $160,000 equipment replacement reserve, $21,000 fire truck replacement reserve. 17,500 recreation facility reserve for major repairs, $22,724 handy transit van operating fund, and $500 handy transit van vehicle replacement reserve. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> Whereas the 2019 capital budget included 32,000 for management council van and $30,000 a half ton truck be borne by the machinery replacement reserve and such vehicles have been purchased at cost net of GST of $34,896.82 and $30,834.44 and respectively totaling $65,731.26. Be hereby, hereby resolved that $65,731.26 be transferred from the machinery replacement reserve fund to the general operating fund. Moved by Councillor Lentoni, second by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <clears throat> Whereas the town of Swan River incurred a general fund operating deficit of $220,824.74 for the year 2018, resolved that the town of Swan River submit an application to the municipal board proposing to recover this deficit through taxation in the years 2020 and 2021 in the amount of $110,412.37 each year. Moved by Councillor Memorial, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Councillor Lindoli. I thought, is, is this uh, a proposal from our CFO? Because I thought that we had discussions that we wanted to um, tackle the, um, the deficit in all of it in 2020. Or is this coming as a recommendation from the CFO? It came completely from the CFO, but I believe he was in discussions with uh, the province, Wendy Wolf, I believe, uh, okay. who I think probably suggested to split it into two years. Okay. Typically, that is what's done. Okay. No, sir. No, yeah. um, I know we've some councillors and that we've discussed it briefly of all doing it all in one lump sum next year, but uh, that's a pretty sizable chunk to do in one year. Um, and when it comes budget time, we can look at that again. We might be able to have that option there. Right now, I, I think it's prudent um, to separate it into two years. And depending on what this year does, if we are in a, happen to be in a surplus situation, we may be able to reduce support out if we be able to towards the end of the year. Yes, and, um, and uh, on top of that, the, the province uh, is looking for the town to move on the deficit. We're not allowed to hold a deficit. So we have to make a move. So it's either we make a resolution to take it all in one year or take it all in two years. So when I ask the question, um, if we apply for that two years, 
can that be changed if we chose next yes. year to be one? Yes, the province would love nothing well, better. Of course, than the rest yeah. Of the okay. Okay. Get, get it all straightened out. Right. Okay. So, so like this is worst case scenario. This is what it is, but we always can make it better. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Whereas, whereas resolution 2019-181 at the regular meeting of council held June 18, 2019, was recorded in the minutes as resolved that the 2019 Airport Commission levy be calculated accordingly to the area property assessment in place for 2017 in keeping with the current Airport Commission agreement. And whereas the resolution was stated in the video recording of that meeting as resolved that the Swan Valley Municipal Airport Commission 2019 levy be based on the 2017 agreement on the Airport Commission by the municipalities. Therefore, be resolved that Resolution 2019-181 be amended in the minutes of the regular meeting of Council held June 18, 2019, to be read as stated in the video recording. It be further resolved that the levy of $27,557 calculated in accordance with Clause 5 of the agreement made October 20, 2017, to establish the Swan Valley Municipal Airport Agreement based on the latest equalized assessment 2019 of each municipality be approved for payment. Moved by Councillor. White, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion. Councillor Wintoni. Sorry? He seconded, I'm not asking a question. Oh, okay. It was seconded by Councillor Wintoni. Okay. Councillor Morio has a question. Um, just for clarification, that's just they're changing uh, the wording to match the video, and that's not. Yes, yes. And not changing the numbers that we said that they should be. Yes. Perfect. This this was uh, Terry had some extra time this past week. <laughs> well, it's good. I gotta realize that. So it's good. Any discussion, Councillor Lentoni? This one was asked yes, just to correct the the wording on it to 2019 instead of 2017 for the the levies. From my understanding. For the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Resolved that the town of Swan River confirmed the intentions to support and provide funding to the Swan Lake Watershed Conservation District for the fiscal year ended March 31st, 2021, in the amount of, and this is the question in this resolution, because it, uh, obviously we know it's changing in 2020, and are we agreeing to what that levy was going to be in 2020 and 2021? Our, the, in our last meeting, we had we approved what the levy was going to be for 2019, which we were already tied into with the agreement. This resolution will cover off if we are in support of maintaining or staying with the Watershed Conservation District and with the amount of dollars that was that was indicated in that report that we received from the district. Unfortunately, Councillor Delore is not here because. I don't know what that is, but Councillor went to all the earning Councillor Moria before we get to this, then we can talk a number and so go ahead. Okay, so do we need to have a decision on this tonight or can we table it? They are been waiting for us for about six months or more. We have for, to, for next year's levy already? Yes. They they need to know the province needs to know if we're in or if we're out. Do you know what that number was? I do not. That's I. I I've changed it to say to equal the amount. Um, yeah. To be resolved by the Swan Lake Watershed Conservation District. Uh, throughout all of my uh, communication with the district, I, I've made it clear that. Uh, this council wants to revisit the formula. Um, I, I don't know what else to do really because there's no way to guarantee it, but I have let them know uh, in writing and over the phone several times that 
that you know the council doesn't see this as a, a, a fair formula to be working with that we need to revisit it sometime in the future. So. Is there a way that we can find out what that number is? Do, do any of you guys have that here with you? Do we know if Councillor Delorier is coming back tonight? He said he was intended on it. Yeah, I don't have that. I was trying to see if I can pull something up here. That might be an adjustment there. Maybe that resolution might work. Are you looking for the number that the conservation district initially invoiced us? The full no. Amount? What would the what the new levy will be in two thousand and twenty? I don't think it's much different than what it is now. Yeah, the, the, the original invoice that they want us to pay for the 1920 annual levy fiscal year ending March 31st, 2020. Or are you talking about the following year? The following year. Well, you, they, they say 1920? The 1920 annual levy based on 2012 tax assessments, 0.665 in the middle, was the 13,441 in yeah, that's the one we just passed. Now they're looking for 2021. Right. So, so I guess this resolution won't cover off that we do support and we do agree to move forward with the levy in 2020 and 21. So I'll read it again. The result of the town of Swan River confirmed the intention to support and provide funding to the Swan Lake Water Conservation District for the fiscal year ending March 31st, 2021, in the amounts equal to the amount resolved by Swan Lake Water Conservation District for the years 2020 and 2021. What do you do? Move, kind of, uh, move, move, move it first. So move by, go ahead. I could add a, but not to exceed amount if you'd like. If we could. If we know what last year's was, we could just change it to 14,000 or 14,000. Can we move this and then maybe if anybody else wants to make an amendment, then we sure. do that? So let's move by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion. Councillor uh, Wincombe. Um, I guess that we approved um, the 20, or then the 2019 2020 payment. Um, in my mind, that's, you know, we've already given in halfway into the the province and the watershed on the way that they're funding funding this. So I'm, I'm not sure, I don't know, I guess if if there's intentions not to not to approve this, perhaps we shouldn't have approved the 19 and 20 payment. That's just my two cents for this one. Uh, Mario. Uh, to follow up with Council with 20, said like the, the 2019 20, 20, 20 invoice separated it into what we thought would be the uh, amount, and then we made a, a grant in lieu of the, the remainder of the invoice. So, um, and then the new act comes effective next year, which is why they want to know what if we're going to be on or for. Uh, I got the problem passing the resolution, but I would. Wondering if it's possible that it's a, have a change to read that, like under duress or something, that we agree to this because it seems like uh, we made our objections very well known at the conservation district and to the minister, and we were told that due to a majority, um, either join or, or not. So 
I, I, I would like the record to reflect that uh, it was not a, a happy moment. Um, maybe more reflect that in a, in a matter of goodwill for inter municipal cooperation is why we're doing this and not just agreeing to a number because we're told it's uh, it's fair. I appreciate what Mr. What Councillor Morio has said, um, but in the grand scheme of things, we either approve it or we don't approve it. I don't think that as much as we want our voices heard, I don't think in, with putting that in our resolution is, is going to speak the volumes in which we're trying to get our message across. Um, uh, but I do appreciate what you're saying for sure. But I guess it's the thought of passing the resolution or not passing the resolution that comes to mind when we when we put those extra comments in our resolution. Thank okay. you. For the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. I think that also like a footnote on that is that uh, Mr. Councillor Delorier will be taking the information from this council to the district and indicating that we want to see something done as far as the um, how the levies are determined because we're definitely not very pleased about it. Point three, resolve that the Parkland Tourism 2019 membership in the amount of $1,300 be approved for payment. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Councillor Morio. Um, I thought for the last past two years we had one invoice from them where we paid the value of the mountains a certain amount and it included the Parkland Tourism. And it appears that we've already paid the, the value of the mountains, but. Uh, or did that get separated out this year? Go ahead, Council. Um, in this, in that resolution, it was presented with one bill. It was separated um, to approve Valley in the Mountains tourism, but not the parkland tourism for that we wanted to receive more information in that regard. But um, more information has not surfaced with, with uh, park or with valley in the mountains there hasn't been a meeting called um, i know that mrs soloway is not feeling very well and i'm not sure where that lies um, i'm not sure that that parkland tourism is where we need to pay our membership i'd like to see us looking for more of the north and i think that was the original conversation but i i do not recall all the details in that one so to clarify, uh, we've paid the Valley of the Mountains Tourism membership, and now it's the Parkland Tourism. That's, that's correct. To my knowledge, and I'm sh I'm a hundred percent sure that that par um, Valley of the Mountains check was received by their organization. Do we know there was a resolution that did, as you can see, approve that payment. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, are they in panic for this, or can we? Brought them one more time to get that information. Or, I think so. Or do we look at either approving or um, disapproving? Are you recommending to take one? Right. Is the likelihood of getting the information available short with or? Um, is that like I? What, 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 what would be your question? I get, are we better off supporting parkland tourism, tourism or focusing our dollars and efforts with the look more type advertising and stuff like that? Like, so like defeating this one and ceasing our membership with parkland tourism, especially when we don't have a, a representative there anymore. And then move our efforts north. So, I don't I, uh, it would be my recommendation to go ahead with this resolution um, with, uh, I mean, we're looking at a 2019 membership. The year is almost over. Um, 
my recommendation is to defeat it and have Parkland, or sorry, Valley of the Mountains Tourism get their ducks in a row and advise as to where they would like um, funding put towards. That would be my recommendation. Council White. I support that 100%. Let's pay this bill, but before we write another, I would encourage both entities to make a presentation to council as to why we should be supporting. Councilman so, or more So I heard two things. One was like, since it's too, we're almost done, 2019, we paid a bill, but then you said def defeat it. So we have a look. Is it? Uh, I, I guess to, to clarify my point, I would defeat it for this year, and if we do decide for the 2020 year to be back in the parkland, so be it. Or it would come from Valley of the Mountains tourism that we would fund the Look North campaign alongside with them. Or if they feel that um, we need to be part of the parkland, that's what we would do too. But looking at the year 2019, we're heading into the end of September. I think that our membership for 2019, we wouldn't get anything, any value of our 2019 membership because I don't think that we had anything currently in it. Council Friesen and then Council Moyle. Just judging by what we went through when we went to Flimflon to the trade show. The Parkland Tourism Magazine had very little of interest of the valley or us, whereas the other one had lots of information and people were getting a lot more out of it than they were out of Parkland. Uh, do we know if the Valley of the Mountains was invoiced from Parkland Tourism for our membership this year? As a, or, or do we pay that directly to Parkland Tourism? Administration, mm -hmm. I get I bet now that Mr. Mario does say that I think that Parkland Tourism would have built Valley in the Mountains already for the whole and that whole for our whole valley. And I think that that is our share. And I, I leave Valley in the Mountains hanging with our with our debt. So I I, I I support what you're saying. Do you yeah. actually know that for a fact? I don't know that for a fact. Go ahead. So can we amend the resolution that providing that uh, we'll, we'll pay this if it's been invoiced to the Valley of the Mountains, and if it's not, then we cancel it. You would have to. You're either better off to table this to find out the information in order to vote on it, yeah, and make it rather than to have two things in there that would make that yeah. much sense. Can we get a table until we get that answer? I would need a mover and a seconder for that, or is that the... No, just not now, about right now. What's that? When, when you table, you just say, I I propose we table it, and everybody vote immediately. Oh, okay, right. So you may... I propose we table the motion. Okay, all in favor? Okay, it's tabled. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Just to follow up with that, Mr. Crowley, you'll, you will follow up with that, or who? Okay, got written down here. Perfect. Thank you. The, I'm just wondering, like, you know, you think that if they're going to have an invoice for, say, 2019, that something like that would be coming out in either December of 18 or January of 19, not in the fall. So there needs to be definitely some clarification on that. So. In their defense, it was put forward April 9th, and I think we were dragging our feet with that. So it's not... I don't think it's Valley in the Mountains, it's us because we did receive the invoice April 9th of this year. That, that's how I understand it. I'm, I'm just going from what uh, the finance officer explained it to me because it was before I came. So. Okay. All right. We resolve that the accounts and schools be hereby approved for payment. General account checks number 24849 to number 24943. For a total of $246,405.97, payroll account checks number 4511 to 4516 for a total of $108,407.81. Moved by Councillor Lintoni, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion, questions, Councillor Morial. Um, check number 24892 to uh, Red Line Chrysler for a remote start for. Bad. Um, 
how, why are we paying for remote start and that should have been part of the request yeah. tender? It, it was, but it was on the recommended vehicle and uh, they took, I guess there was a back and forth between themselves as me accepting that they would put the remote start on the recommended vehicle. Like normally, I would say no until I have a resolution. They challenged me and said that I approved it. Uh, so it was either we negotiate, and the, this, of course, it was all installed in the recommended vehicle by the time it went to council. So when we purchased the other vehicle, they went to me and said, well, this thing's already installed, and you gave the approval, and that's where the argument lie so they they said well, we'll put a new one in your new van that you did purchase if you cover a portion of the cost so them installing a remote starter in a vehicle that they proposed how does that become our problem if that's not the one we selected among the three vehicles that they yeah. proposed to us until we came back with them and said you were just successful uh, bitter for the this type of vehicle. Right. They they said their stance is that I approved it. My stance was that I didn't, uh, but I did agree to for them to put a new remote start in our new vehicle. Uh, but when you did looking at the quote, the quote said included a command start as part of their their price quote. Is it looking at the quotes that were sent out, it required a command start in it. Yeah, we have to double check on that, but uh, I guess I've, like I, I did want the, we did want the remote start in the van, yeah. but I accepted the like purchase. I just still don't get it how they like until they have a, an actual acceptance of tender um, we're not responsible for what they do to the vehicle prior to to get it into shape for acceptance no i and that's exactly what i said their their stance was that i, ex, I accepted it prior to that but i like i we did have a back and forth and you know i said well we, we can't pay for something we haven't approved he said, well, you, you told us that this, you know, his stance is that I, that I said yes, and we just went back and forth. And I said, ultimately, I can't pay for the one that's going in the old van. I need one in the new van. And, and now that I've got to, I've got to check and see if, the, if it was in the, in the request for quotation. So we had to pay extra? For into the new van also. No, no, no. We know we only pay for one remote, remote unit in a vehicle that we didn't purchase. No, no. Initially, they they had gone ahead when when I told them that they had, were the low price we were going to recommend that vehicle. I I'm saying I did not say put the remote start in. They're saying I did. So it went in that vehicle. And so when we when we passed the resolution for a, a different vehicle, I called them and said, you know, we, we you know, they did not go with the recommendation, the recommended vehicle. They went with this vehicle. Well, we've already got the room started, and I'm like, well, that that's not my problem. And I said, well, I need a remote room started in this van, and I agreed to pay to get it in that van. I've got to check to see if it was in the initial quotation because I can't remember. It was. I guess I again up <laughs> the Eagles are, are a real uh, uh, mess this year, but I've got to accept this one because I I approved this purchase. Yes. The follow up, um, and this might be a procedural thing that might get ironed out in the new procurement bylaw, but communication after. Once they submitted their quote, uh, and until there's a, an actual selected winner of each item, we I don't think we should be communicating back and forth that they are this favorite or wherever. Because we just proved that just because 
you recommended to us, council had the purview of changing it. Right. Um, no, and that, that makes sense. They they all ask, but mm -hmm. uh, we don't have to tell them. And the standard answer would be uh, council hasn't reviewed and made a decision on it yet. So. Of, of course, that's always said. We say, you know, we say you're recommended, but you're waiting. Yeah. Time. I wouldn't even go that. It's just that it's, it's being looked at yet we have no decision because then it avoids this whole, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Ambiguous assumptions that, well, you're the one recommending it, but you. Having a tough time persuading that. Further discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Result of the financial statement for the six months ending June 30th, 2019, be adopted as received. Moved by Councillor Tony, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Resolved that bylaw 7 2019 being a bylaw of the town of Swan Rivers to establish and set a municipal procurement policy be read a third time and be passed. Moved by Councillor Morio, signed by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Oh, I'm sorry, it's recorded vote. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. I read, no, your, I just, I just I read your mind. Well, no, actually, it wasn't that. I, I'd already set it up for recorded vote. It was, I just wanted to give a bit of an explanation because we pulled several paragraphs out. Uh, we, we sent, um, I, I sent the uh, proposed bylaw to Brandon for review with the Brandon uh, uh, Procurement uh, Department, City of Brandon. Yeah. And they sent it back and said they were happy with it. They, they thought it was okay, uh, but they would go in a different direction slightly, which is that the procurement policy be the pure policy. Pull those um, explanations of what an RFQ, RFP, that type of thing, pull those out and put them in a separate document just for the managers to explain to the managers how to build uh, RFP. So that's what I did. That's, that's the changes. And then there was a couple of minor ones that are highlighted in yellow. Uh, just technicalities that they picked up on. So, well, it's good that we have a good working relationship with the city of Brandon. Okay, so uh, resolve that the pursuit of Section 152.3 of the Municipal Act, Council go to committee and close the meeting to the public. Moved by Councillor Morio, Sigma Council Friesen. We have an employee relations discussion, so all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. Resolved that this regular meeting of council now be adjourned. Moved by Councillor Friesen. Moved by Councillor, seconded by Councillor White. All in favor? It's carried. Thank you very much. Anybody?